you love me, please don't judge me Got my hands tied, the power's above me Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a puppet here If you wanna place blame, then look to the puppeteer Family, fortune, envy, jealousy, privilege Passed on, legacy, secret, sabotage, borderline, felony Suicide, subtract, selfish, pedigree Well, this race had about fucking everything happen in it. Man, like, what was this race? What was this? But yeah, anyway, before we talk about what happened today's cup race, let's talk about the other races that happened this weekend at the Indy Roval. So, of course, um, the first race we had for this weekend was the Indy Car Race. The Indy Car Race was something. It was This race was mainly dominated by Will Power. Like, Power dominated this race all weekend. But, you did have a big turning point in the championship battle when Alex Palou lost his engine late in the race. Which will greatly affect Palou's championship lead. But after that caution, a late race restart. Um, Despite Roman Grosjean's best attempts at the end, it just wasn't enough to stop Will Power. Just Will Power had the better car than Grosjean today. And Will Power finally gets his first win of the season. Winning at the Indy Roval. Man, Will Power just has that track figured out when it comes to the road course. But yeah, Will Power finally gets his first win of the year. Thank God. And Grosjean gets another second place finish. Damn it, I was really hoping Grosjean would get a win this year. Like, it would have been something that Grosjean could get out, could get a win. Someday, Grosjean will get his win at the Indianapolis Road Course. Someday. But anyway, now on to the Xfinity race at the Indianapolis Roval. We're entering this race. The Xfinity chase bubble would take an interesting turn. When Mike Wynette would be forced to miss this race. After having leg surgery and he just couldn't go through. He only completed two practice laps prior to the race. So he could not go through with it. Because of his leg issues. Like just Michael and Nett. He just cannot stay healthy. Because now this is he's now missed three of the last four races. Which has really affected his spawn Xfinity chase grid. So subbing for Michael and Nett will be Chase Elliott. So, replacing Michael and Nett with a leech. Nor now, normally I would be pissed about Chase Elliott running in Xfinity because Chase Elliott has no business going down to Xfinity in trucks. But I'm willing to give this one a pass because Chase Elliott was not supposed to be in this race until the until the, like the last minute when Michael and Nett was not medically cleared to run. So, and they were scrambling for a last, for a last second replacement, and Chase Elliott just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And Chase Elliott's running at a road course. I mean, hey, if you have a shot to put Chase Elliott in your car in a road course race, you gotta take it. But hey, in this Xfinity race, we will get, finally get, the return of Max Pappas. Oh, wait, scratch that, never mind. The racing gods deem that Max Pappas should not be racing in a Rick Ware shitbox car. So the racing gods did everyone a favor. And made Max Pappas test positive for the Black Plague. Never mind. No Max Pappas. It will be J.J. Yaley going in the 17 Rick Ware shitbox. Honestly, it's kind of a good thing. Max Pappas deserves a better ride than those Rick Ware shitboxes. But overall, this race, though, this race was mainly dominated by Austin Sindrick and A.J. Allmendinger, like the two normal road course rainers on these tracks. Like, it was mainly Sindrick that dominated for the most part, like, despite A.J. Allmendinger's best attempts to try and catch Sindrick late, it just wasn't enough. And Austin Sindrick goes on and gets his fifth win of the season. And this is Sendrick's first win of the year on a road course, which is kind of shocking considering how good Sendrick is on road courses that he's only won one this year. 
He arguably should have won the Daytona Road Course, but... But him and AJ chose to race each other in the end of stage one of that race like a bunch of dumbasses on the last lap of stage one. But hey. And he probably could have won the two he probably could have won another one. Maybe in but you know, hey, it is what it is. But Cindric gets a row finally gets a road course win this year. So yeah, Cindric getting ready for the Xfinity chases. It looks like Cindric's gonna be the man to beat for Xfinity this year. The reigning champ, the favorite to defend his title again. Can he go two in a row before he takes over the two car in the Cup Series? We'll have to see. And of course, some um, in this race, some um, terrible hurts would make enough points up. And now because of Michael and Nett's health issues, terrible hurts is now in the chase. Oh, fuck me. So, and oh, this is gonna, if Herps makes the chase, it'll be the worst thing to happen to SHR. Because that will more than likely fool SHR to keeping Herps for another ye undeserved year. And it will be just a waste of a chase spot. Honestly, the best case scenario is if Ryan Sieg or someone below the cutoff line wins like fucking Daytona or some shit. That's literally the best case scenario. Herps has no business being anywhere near the chase. Especially with how much he's underachieved in that 98 car. The same 98 car that won nine races and competed for a championship with Chase Briscoe last season. Oh, well, yeah. God damn it. Anyway, moving on to the cup race at Indianapolis on the Indy Roval. The first ever race on the Indianapolis Row Course. Well, for Stage 1, Stage 1 was completely dominated by Chase Briscoe until, the, until all the leaders chose to pit lane this, right before the end of the stage for to still have track position after the stage break caution. And now it allowed Tyler Reddick to win Stage 1 as Reddick is trying to gain stage points since Reddick wants that 16th and final chase spot more than Austin Dillon. And then stage two, well, stage two was mainly dominated by Chase Elliott because during the stage caution, Chase Briscoe would get a penalty, beep, for not maintaining pace car speed, and he would be pushed back. But yeah, stage two was mainly uh, the HMS show. It was Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson and William Byron. Like, for much of this race, it was 1-2-3 HMS. Because Byron ran out front with Elliott and Larson for a majority of this race. The only HMS car that had no speed in this race was Alex Bowman. When Bowman looked like complete fucking dog shit. I'm gonna say this for the chase. Bowman's either boom or bust in the chase. He's boom or bust. He, he, he's, he's either gonna go deep in the chase. Or Bowman's gonna fall apart and get eliminated in the first round. That's how it's gonna go. If he falls apart, he will be out in the first round. If he if he gets hot at the right time, I see him going to the, at least the round of eight. We'll have to see what happens, though, when we get to the chase. But, of course, once again, at the end of stage two, the leaders would pit again so that they would remain, get track position at the end of the stage caution. And now it allow Tyler Reddick to win stage two. So Tyler Reddick stays out for stage points. And Tyler Reddick get wins to both stages. And if Reddick makes the chase, that's two more bonus points for him toward the chase. And he gets max and he gets the max bonus points. He gets 20 bonus points toward the chase toward the points. And that will be and that will play a huge factor if for Reddick. So right now, Reddick wants that chase spot more than Austin Dillon. Like I said, Austin Dillon or Tyler Reddick, who wants it more? Right now, the edge is going to Reddick. And then stage three. Well, at the near the end of stage two, Chase Elliott would get held up by the lab caught by James Davidson for a position since Davidson was still on the lead lab. That was not a lab car. He was still on for in position and raced Chase hard. And Kyle Larson would take full advantage of it and get past Chase Elliott. So then stage three, it was it was between Elliott and Larson and Byron. Like Larson, like Larson though, in stage three, Larson clearly had the best car in the field. 
Like, he was pulling away. Like, he was, like, five seconds ahead of Chase Elliott for much of stage three. But it still remained a 1-2-3 HMS run. And then with 10 laps to go, we would get the turning point of this race. Where 10 to go, we would have a caution for debris off of turn six on the straightaway past the curb. Right on the racing line. So, yeah, that would change everything up. And then the field would all pit. Except for four cars would stay out for track position. And those four being Denny Hamlin, the sex god Kurt Busch, Matt Benedetto, and Chase Briscoe. Those four stayed out. And of course, Benedetto, of course, has to stay out because he cannot gain points. He's in a must-win scenario, so that's understandable. Kurt Busch is just trying to get bonus points toward the chase. Denny Hamlin's trying to do everything he can to stay ahead of Kyle Larson in a regular season championship. And Briscoe, he, he's in a must-win scenario, too, trying to win at his home track and get that first career win. So Larson would end up fifth on the restart. Now on the restart, Larson would gain ground immediately. But then on the restart, on the turn six curb, we would see a shitload of debris go everywhere on the track. And then Truex will get turned as a result by his teammate Christopher Bell. Uh, Bell, that's the wrong car to turn. You were supposed to turn Kyle Larson, not your own damn teammate, you dipshit. Damn it, Bell, you had one job. One fucking job and you done fucked it up. But despite debris and shit being everywhere on the track, NASCAR lets the race stay green. And then the following lab, on that curb with five to go, Q, the biggest, Q, one of the biggest shit shows in NASCAR since the 2020 clash. Where, 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 where the first three, Hamlin, Briscoe, and Larson would go through that curb well, but when Byron hits that turn five curb, the curb would, co would fall completely apart, and we would get a rarity on a road course. The big one, where the destroy, where the damaged curb would puncture William Byron's radiator, and then Byron spins out from all the foot water all over the track from his radiator, and then Kyle Busch spins out, and then Harvick gets spins out, Davidson spins out, Christopher Bell gets wrecked. Who else? Uh, Ryan Priest also gets some damage. Justin Haley gets some damage. Like, it was just complete fucking carnage. All hell broke loose. And then Joey Logano's car would get stuck under the tire barrier. And so Logano would get the worst of it. And that was a nasty hit. Glad to see Logano walk away from that. Like, that was just fucking bad. Like, if that was the 90s, Logano would either be dead or he would be severely injured. But thank God to all the advancements in safety. Just every every now and then, we just get reminded how dangerous auto racing is in general, and that auto racing is the most dangerous sport in the world. So then we would go under a red flag, and then during the red flag, Kyle Larson's team would challenge NASCAR scoring by saying that they were ahead of Chase Briscoe at the last corner loop before the caution, and NASCAR actually looked back and reviewed it, and I actually confirmed it. So they made so Larson's team made a challenge and won. So Lar so Larson would get second af after NASCAR fixed the scoring error. So of course the red flag is out because they gotta repair the tire barrier from Magano's car getting stuck in the barrier and getting it out. And actually someone showed a photo that while they were trying to tow Magano's car away. The car would fall off the tow strips on the tow truck. The car They would drop the car off the tow truck. Well, someone on the Indianapolis Motor Speedway track crew is getting fired this Monday. Someone's getting fired Monday. And throughout this race, they were doing so much work on that turn six curb. And it should not have come apart, but it did. I honestly feel like it was just a wear and tear issue. That caused that whole thing. Because you had Indy cars all over it this weekend. And then you had Xfinity cars all over it. And then the Cup cars on it. It just was not meant to hold three cars. Those cars are not strong enough to hold three cars in one weekend.
or three racing series in one weekend. So NASCAR solution, just take the curb completely away, just throw some kitty litter and speedy dry down there, and just let them race. They just gotta hang on for two more laps since that incident would send a race to overtime. So then the first attempt to overtime, you have Larson and Denny Hamlin on the front row with a shot to win and the re points lead for the regular season championship on the line. So on that restart, Lars Hamlin would try and force Larson up the track and then Kurt Busch would lock his brakes. And now he would make contact with Larson and Larson would get out of the groove and fall back a bit. That would allow Chase Briscoe to get up there and contend. And then on the restart, Michael McDowell would hop the little ramp curb there in turn six, trying to take advantage of that open space. And then McDowell would spin out and more cars would wreck, including Martin Drex Jr. And this would also take out both Tyler Reddick and Austin Dillon. But Reddick was, was able to make get back out there and finish. So Reddick gained some points on Austin Dillon. And that would lead to another red flag, because the tire barrier was damaged again, and they had to repair it. So then the race goes to double overtime. So on the, on the restart, Denny Hamlin would be on the front row with Chase Briscoe. And on that restart, Hamlin would force Briscoe off the track in turn one. And then Briscoe would cut down all the way into turn two. And as they got to turn 10, Chase Briscoe would then get a, t a stop and go penalty around that area. And then Chase Briscoe didn't even know they were at the place they wanted him to stop at. And then during that whole thing, Chase Briscoe decided, you know what? He decided, you know what, Hamlin? If I'm not winning this race, you're choking ass ain't either. Get in the grass. And let's be real, Briscoe straight up dumped Hamlin. That was straight up dumping Hamlin. But let's be real, Hamlin kind of deserved it. Because he forced Briscoe off the track in turn one. And that and forcing Briscoe off the track led to Briscoe getting the penalty. Which he shouldn't have got the penalty because he was forced off. Like he was for like Briscoe was forced off. That was complete bullshit. And he, and he, Briscoe pretty much justified himself and took Hamlin out, and then Briscoe went down pit lane to pit. As it was later revealed out that, that NASCAR decided to park Briscoe for the remainder of the race. So with all that said, so if Briscoe get, gets parked and Hamlin gets dumped out of the lead, who in the literal fuck won this race? AJ Allmendinger? AJ won? What? What? It's only fitting that this shit show of a fin shit show finish of a race had the most what the fuck moment. Yeah, this is easily a what the fuck moment this year. Like this is that this what the fuck moment is up there with Michael McDowell's winning the 500 this year. AJ Allmendinger wins the Indianapolis Roval race, and Kyle Larson battles back to finish third while Hamlin finishes 24th. So because of Larson's good run, that now gives Kyle Larson a 22-point lead in the regular season championship, heading to Michigan next week. With two races to go in the regular season. And of course, um, after the race, Hamlin and Briscoe would have a confrontation. And it was just, you know, both drivers voicing their sides of it. No fist to cuffs thrown. And it ended peacefully. Lame. If I was Briscoe, I would just honestly punch Hamlin right in the fucking face. Because Hamlin straight up costed Briscoe to win. So Briscoe made it fitting that he costed Hamlin to win as well. Only four guarantees in life. Death, taxes, access to free porn, and Denny Hamlin choking another win away. I don't know, is it possible that Denny Hamlin could go winless this year? Who knows, could Hamlin even become the first ever winless champion in the Cup Series? It might happen. We'll have to see what happens in November, come November. But yeah, overall, this race was good. It was still a very good race. But that finish was a fucking shit show. 
But still, despite the race being the finish being a complete fucking shit show, I'd still gladly take the Indianapolis road course over the Indianapolis Oval any day of the week. The Oval was never built for stock cars. It was built for Indy cars. And let's be real. This Roval race at Indianapolis was better than the last six Indy Oval races combined. No, 2017 doesn't count as a good race for the Indy Oval. That race only became good after Kyle Busch and Martin Truex Jr. took each other out. If that wreck didn't happen in the 2017 race, that race would have fucking sucked. End of story. But yeah, I definitely take the Indy Roval over the Indy Oval any day of the week. The only people that are going to complain about this are fucking boomers. Because boomers want to stick to, quote, Mitch Dyson. Because, they can't, because they're too stuck in the fucking past and they're outdated and, and are out of touch with reality. And it was a good race, but... The dead finish kind of ruined it. That shit show ruined it with the curb issue and all that. And let me be real, HMS fans. NASCAR did not screw Larson out of this race. Larson was not screwed. It was just... Larson was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. It was just... That was just all bad luck. He just... That was just bad luck. That Larson got beat on strategy. But hey, four tires was the right call. Pitting pitting with 10 to go was the right call under that caution. Because Holman Dieter pitted under that caution and he ended up winning the race. It was the right call. It was just bad luck and circumstances that cost Larson. Like, Larson should have won this race, but it was just bad luck and circumstances. The good news is Larson still has plenty of time. To tie another HMS record. Because Larson is only two wins away. For tying an HMS record that has stood for 35 years. And that record is most wins by a first year driver at HMS. The current record is held by Tim Richmond. Who had seven wins in 1986. And we all know what happened to Tim Richmond after that season. When Tim Richmond tested positive for AIDS and then he died two years later because there wasn't a cure for AIDS in the 80s. Since Tim Richmond was a goddamn sex magnet and a sex god. Like, Tim Richmond was the original sex god before Kurt Busch decided, before Kurt Busch made it cool. But yeah. Still. Still, Larson has plenty of time to tie that record because Larson's at five wins right now. And there's a good chance Larson wins seven, maybe eight races this year. And I believe Larson would have the poll for Michigan next week. And don't forget, Larson, Larson's very damn good at Michigan. Like, Michigan's one of his better tracks. So, chances of Larson getting the seven or eight wins this year is still pretty high. Can Larson tie a record at HMS or break a record that stood for 35 years? We'll have to wait and see what happens. But yeah, still overall very good points. They and now Larson holds the regular season championship lead. And if Larson can win the regular season championship, that gives him 15 more bonus points toward the chase. And that could give him almost a full race ahead of the cut line. So yeah. So of course two races left till the cup chase. Begins, we got Michigan and Daytona. Now, sadly, I'm not going to be at Michigan this week. Next week, because I've had a number of health issues. So, I'm not going to be at Michigan this year. I'll, I'll, we'll try again in 2022. I've just been battling health issues this year. So, that's a no-go. But I am looking at going to a NASCAR race this year in September. In a different series. A series... The series in Canada set that mainly that Pinty Series Championship weekend at Delaware. Since Delaware is like 45 minutes away from me, so I plan on attending that race. So I am going to a NASCAR. I plan on going to a NASCAR race this year and doing a vlog for it. Just not Michigan. We're going to Plan B. Plan B. There is always a Plan B. But yeah, anyway. Let's end this off and let's take a look at the chase grid for Xfinity and Cup coming up. So here is the Xfinity chase grid with five races to go in the Xfinity chase. So 
Daniel Hemrick, Harrison Byrne, Justin Haley, and Noah Gregson. We're not talking about those four. There's no chance in hell neither of those four missed either of those four missed the chase. Brandon Jones and Jeremy Clements are 45 and 40 to the good. They're pretty safe right now, but there's still five races to go. Anything can happen. At this point, both of them control their own destiny at this point. And now Terrible Herps is in the chase. So now there's a chance that Terrible Herps can now bullshit his way into the Xfinity chase because of Michael and Nett's health issues. Since Michael and Nett can't stay healthy after leg, after leg surgery. Like, the best case scenario to keep Herps from bullshitting his way into the chase is if, like, Brandon Brown or Ryan Sieg or Tommy Joe Martin win at Daytona or something. Like, at this point, I don't give a fuck which shitmobile driver wins. Just someone knock terrible Herps out of the chase. I don't give a fuck who it is. Brandon Brown, Ryan Sieg, Tommy Joe Martin, fuck Brett Moffitt. I don't care who, anybody. Please save us from Terrible Herps wasting a chase spot. Because Herps, if he makes it in, he's going to do absolutely nothing with that chase spot. So, yeah. Because Brandon Brown and Ryan Zig, they're pretty much in nearly must-win scenarios. Their best chance is probably winning a race. And that would be the best-case scenario to not let Terrible Herps bullshit his way into the chase. So, yeah, that's the Xfinity chase grid. No, by the way, I should mention that next week the trucks are also starting their chase next week at Gateway with IndyCar at Gateway as well. So yeah, later this week I'll have the Truck Series Chase Grid Prediction video up. We get my thoughts on the Truck Series Chase. Anyway, let's move on to the Cup one. So now moving on to the Cup Chase. Um, one thing I should mention to Hamlin fans real quick is stop losing your shit over Chase Briscoe because with AJ Allmendinger winning... And A.J. Allmendinger not running for cup points. So Allmendinger's win does nothing in terms of the chase grid. Here's the good news, Hamlin. Because with Allmendinger winning, it now guarantees that Denny Hamlin is officially locked into the chase. So now with two races left, there are now two spots up for grabs. And a win is an automatic berth into the chase now. So now we're guaranteed at least one driver will make the chase on points. Hamlin is in on points right now. He's in no matter what happens. So now looking at the points grid, Kevin Harvick, 95 points to the good. There's no chance Harvick misses the chase. There's zero chance of it happening. Unless someone wins, f unless we get two surprise winners, which I highly doubt. Especially when we're going to Michigan next week, which has been one of Harvick's personal playgrounds the last few years. Especially with Harvick winning four of the last five races at Michigan. Unless Larson has something to say about it. So you got Harvick 95 to the good. Tyler Reddick's 28 to the good over Austin Dillon. Because Reddick had a really damn good race and was able to get points. Get those stage points over R Dillon. So Reddick now, at this point, Reddick controls his own destiny over his teammate. Who wants it more? And then Matt DiBenedetto, Chris Buescher, Ross Chastain, and everybody else below the cutoff line. They're all mathematically eliminated. They cannot make it in on points. The only way the Benedetto, Buescher, Chastain, and everybody else below them can make the chase now is with a win. They can only make it in with a win. So for all of them, their goal is very simple. Win, and you're in. So the only driver left that can make it, that can possibly make it in on points is Austin Dillon. So yeah, Austin Dillon, he needs to start gaining points. He needs to have a good run at Michigan and Daytona, or win, or and hope that Tyler Reddick has some issues. While everybody else, it's very simple. Win, and... And you're in. So two more races left till the cup chase begins. Heading to Michigan next week. But before we wrap this up, we have one more thing to say. Because it's come to my attention. Because Quinn Howe has is officially the first driver to be mathematically eliminated from chase contention. Since half Quinn Howe is too far back behind 30th to make the chase. So for Quinn Howe, he has officially arrived 
at Elimination Station as his ride home is going to be short-lived with him arriving at Elimination Station. And for that, he's going somewhere different. Because for Quinn House, failures are having a good season. His failures of making the top 30 in points. His failures of getting a win this season. His failures of being consistent enough to make the chase this year. And his hopes and dreams of competing for a championship this year. Consider his name written down in the death note. As his season has been absolutely deleted. Except the memes. The memes can stay. But Quinn Half is deleted. There's only one thing left to do. Gotta write their names in the death note. Delete! Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete, delete, delete. Delete,